I never thought I'd see a monitor that was too big for my desk, but this could be just about pushing the boundaries. This is a 40 inch 4K curved monitor from Philips. It's the BDM4037U. The name may not exactly roll off the tongue, but it is seriously impressive, just in sheer scale. It's not exactly cheap at around 600 pounds, but well, you're getting a lot of monitor for your money. So let's run through why you may actually want to consider buying something like this. First of all, productivity. I've got Adobe Premiere Pro up here. You just get so much space. You don't have to zoom into your timeline as much. Everything is just there. But this is the point where I want to talk about scaling because for most 4K monitors that are smaller than this, you have to whack the scaling up quite a bit in order to make the text and the icons not look so small that you have to strain your eyes. With this, well, as you can see, I've still got it on 150%. I find that the most comfortable, but you could bring it down to 125 or even 100%. That's one-to-one -one scaling, pure 4K. And just look at this. You can still see it. You can still use it. The icons are a bit small for me, but you just get so much more room on your timeline. It really is a great productivity monitor. And I think really does show off the benefits of 4K now that you can have scaling at 100% or 125 and not something stupid like 200% that you may have to on a smaller 27 inch monitor. So it's great for getting some work done, but it's also good to play some games on. Jumping into Battlefield, straight off you can hear those speakers. You get stereo five watt speakers, which are um, a bit naff if I'm honest. So here I am in Battlefield 1, I'm online, so uh, this is probably quite embarrassing, but it's running at native 4K, and I mean, it looks incredible, of course it does, but at the same time, you have to pay attention to the frame rate, which I've got going on at the top left here. I'm averaging about 49, 50 frames per second, that's on a pretty beefy PC, and I'm barely, barely getting 60 frames per second, so that's something you really need to consider if you are a gamer and you are going to look into getting a 4K monitor. Input lag and response time are pretty good as well, despite the size and resolution, we're looking at around 4 milliseconds grey to grey. So uh, yeah, this is actually really pretty good for gaming. Colours look pretty good too, and that's because it's using a VA panel. Most monitors these days use either an IPS or TN. Samsung famously uh, tend to use VA, which stands for vertical alignment. There's a few pros and cons to using a VA panel. The benefits include much better contrast ratio. I measured a 4,200 to one static contrast ratio on this, which is around four times higher than your average IPS monitor, which means blacks look inkier, you get richer whites, much better dynamic range in sort of colors. So if you've got bright lights outside, you get nice inky blacks, rich whites. But the downsides of VA traditionally are poor viewing angles and not quite as accurate colors compared to an IPS. Although this Philips monitor seems to buck that trend a little bit. I used a colorometer on this and found that it covered 100% of the sRGB color gamma and 86% of the Adobe RGB gamma, which is actually very impressive, especially for a VA. Viewing angles though aren't quite as good. If I bring up a browser tab, Funnily enough, got the tech chap there, great channel. You can see how the whites become a bit more reddish. You lose a lot of brightness quite quickly. They're not as good as you would get on an IPS, but they are better than a TN. And that is one of the issues with a monitor this size. It's so big that you have to sit in the absolute center sweet spot or else you do see a bit of color shift. You do see the brightness drop a little bit. And I also do notice quite a lot of darkening around the edges of the panel. But on the whole, the monitor looks great and colors really pop. It's very vibrant and that's one of the benefits of VA. Also, Philips claim this has an ultra wide color gamut. I'm not sure exactly what that means really. And maybe that's just marketing, but they say in the spec, this has a 10 bit uh, panel. It doesn't really, it has eight bit and uses something called dithering to artificially boost it up to over a billion colors. So it's not true 10 bit. That may annoy some professional uh, color editors, people who do need a proper accurate monitor, but for me, for most of us, it's plenty good enough and it looks fantastic. It's also glossy, but not the end of the world reflective, although considering it is curved, even quite subtly, you do, in my opinion, notice the, those reflections a little bit more easily. I do like a curved monitor, I don't like a curved TV, but considering with monitors, it's just you, it's just the monitor, you're usually sitting right in front of it. It does add a little bit of immersion to whatever you're watching or playing, so I quite like it. So I'm pretty impressed with the display, although it's not perfect, but let's talk about the design, the build of it. Well, it's huge. I do like this horseshoe shaped stand. It's quite elegant, doesn't take up a whole lot of room on the desk, for, especially for a monitor this size. Screen wobble, it's not the best. It does sit stably on the desk, but as you can see, it um, moves quite easily. So if you live in an earthquake prone region, maybe this isn't the best one for you. If I unplug it really quickly and like so, and then I twist it round, something's gonna go wrong here. Oh, this is a big, 
this is a big martyr. There you have it. As you can see, you can't really miss it. It's glossy white, completely plastic. And I think it looks quite smart. And you get a good access to the pretty broad range of ports. You get two HDMIs. One is 1.4, one is 2.0. They both support MHL. You get two display ports, VGA, a mic in and headphone out, as well as four USB ports. Great range of ports. Uh, I really do compliment it on that. For me, the biggest issue with its design is the lack of flexibility. This is pretty much all you can do with it. You can bring it forward about five degrees or you can move it back about 10 degrees. That's it. The final thing I want to mention is multi-view. Basically split screen, picture in picture, which is pretty cool. And actually a great use for a monitor this size, especially at 4K. This is my DisplayPort 1.2 input uh, coming from my desktop. I currently don't have anything else plugged in, but I could split this four ways. Like so, I could have my PS4 Pro here, I could have my laptop output here, I could have something else there if I wanted to, or you can have it side by side, any sort of combination you want. And that really is a great selling point for a monitor this size. So it's not perfect, but I'm still very impressed by the Philips monitor here. And if you do fancy buying it or finding out more, you can find links in the description below. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be great if you gave me a thumbs up and maybe press that subscribe button right there. That'd be fantastic. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.